Welcome to the third episode of our preparation for this year's lower secondary checkpoint science examination. So I would advise you to listen attentively, learn, grab the key points required to pass this year's science checkpoint. Enjoy the video. Move straight to our first question. Is a vacuum flask is used to keep hot drinks warm. Below are the particle models for different substances. Tick the box to match each substance with the correct particle model. So we have these models A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, representing different substances used in making the vacuum flask there at the top right. So the first question says, which particle model represents steel? Steel is an alloy. So which particle model represents steel? So it will be advisable for us to name all these models. Okay, for instance, now A here, if you look at it closely, it is a solid. Comparable to E, E is also a solid. But what makes the difference is that in A, there are tiny, tiny gray round balls there. That is not as black as the thick ones. Small, small, and gray. Which shows that A is a mixture of metals. It's a mixture of metals, mixture of solid substances. So A is an alloy. Then we move to B. If you look at B, you will see that B is a liquid. So B is a liquid. Then if you look at particle C, C is representing gaseous state, and that will be the hair. Gaseous state, I will say the hair. All right? Then D. No particle present. So definitely that would be a vacuum. No particle present, so that would be a vacuum. Then particle model E is now a pure solid. So that is a pure solid. Okay. So automatically you will see that Particle A here is the alloy. So the answer to this our first question for steel, the particle model for steel as an alloy is particle A. So the, the instruction says give a tick. So you just give a tick there to particle model A for steel. Then the next one now has to do with the same particle model, but at this point, we're going to find the particle model for substance hair. For the hair, you see, identifying particle A, B, C, D, and E will easily help us to identify this particle model. So for hair now would be C. And C is not just hair, it is a mixture of it. That's why I would say this hair or gas it is a mixture. You can see the plain white balls and the shaded black ball there. So it is a mixture of gases. So particles model C is for hair. All right. Then we'll now move to the next particle model, still on particle model, which of them now represents pure liquid water. Pure liquid water. So for the particle models, we know it is not A. We already know it is not C, and we already know it is not E, okay? So it's between B and it's just B. So for liquid here, we have particle model B for pure liquid. 
particle model B for pure liquid, then the next particle model now is for us to be able to identify the particle model for a vacuum. You see, a vacuum now, we just say particle model D. So you just give the D your tick there for the vacuum. So now we move to this segment of the question that says, explain why particle model D shows a vacuum. How does particle model D shows a vacuum? If you look at it, there are no particles present. So a vacuum is devoid of any matter. That is no particles present in a vacuum. So vacuum is devoid of any form of particles. Please and please, if you love our video, please do all to like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are out. So as we continue, let's learn more. Steel is an alloy that contains iron. What is an alloy? This is an alloy that contains iron. And what is an alloy? So we need to understand that an alloy is a mixture containing a metal and another element. A metal first contains a metal and another element. So this other element can be another metal, or it can even be more than one metal. There are alloys with three metals combined or more. So an alloy is a mixture containing a metal and another element. The next question says, suggest why an alloy of steel is used instead of pure iron. Why is an alloy of steel used instead of pure iron. So alloys have better properties compared to the pure form of these metals or iron. So they have better properties, like they are more resistant to rusting, they are more resistant to corrosion, they are harder, they are stronger than the pure form of iron. So that's why alloys are used mostly. Especially the alloy of steel is used instead of pure iron because of this, their better properties. So this will now take us to the next question. Mike is flying on a plane from Australia to Canada. The two airports are 15,000 kilometers apart. The flight takes 20 hours. Calculate the average speed of the plane. Follow the instruction that says, include the units for speed in your answer and show your working. Show your working, all right? So definitely you're going to calculate and your calculation you need to show it. First of all, what is the formula for calculating average speed? So that is the first thing to write and that's what you need to show. All right. So the first thing to do is write out the formula for average speed. Speed is equal to distance over time. And from our question, our distance is 15,000 kilometers. And our time, the time it takes for the flight is 20 hours. So that's the calculation you just need to show. Formula, distance over time, 15,000 divided by 20. And when you solve that, you have 750 as the average speed. The next thing is include the unit for speed. Include the unit. And the unit of distance given here is in kilometers. The unit of time provided here is in hours. So distance per time, the unit is kilometer per hour. That's why the unit here is kilometer per hour. Do well to like the video, subscribe, 
hit the bell notification and share with friends. We move to the next aspect that okay? a car has sensor that makes sound. The sound changes the closer the car gets to an object. Look at the diagram of two waveforms for the sound made by the sensor. Whenever the car comes close to an object, it makes this sound. We have waveform when car is far from an object, which is the first waveform there. And the second waveform is when car is close to an object. Now the question is, describe how the sound from the sensors changes as the car gets closer to an object. How the sensors changes as the car gets closer to an object. So we're definitely going to look at the second waveform, waveform when car is close to an object. If you look at this, comparing it with the previous, number one, it has a higher amplitude. Number two, it has higher frequency. The higher amplitude will make it to be more loud. The sound will be louder because the volume of the sound, how loud the sound is, is dependent on the amplitude. And what do we mean by the amplitude? The amplitude is the distance from the peak to this point. So that distance there is the amplitude. So comparing that with this one, this one is way, way higher. So because of that, this will be louder because of the high amplitude. Now the second reason here now is based on the frequency as the number of oscillations per second. And if you look at it, we have about how many oscillations in this one. This is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four oscillations. Now this one just has one, two, and three oscillations. So car that is close to an object has more frequency, and this frequency will lead to higher pitch. The pitch will be higher. So pitch is dependent on the frequency, while loudness or volume depends on the amplitude. So take note of those things while you are dealing with sound. Volume increases and the pitch also gets higher. Now the second aspect of the question now says, explain how the sound from the sensors changes as the car gets closer to an object using information from the wave forms. I've even explained it earlier. These are now the conditions that give birth to those properties we observe the loudness is dependent on what the amplitude louder because amplitude increases this is the explanation using waveform amplitude is associated with the waveform all right so when you use the word amplitude you are now explaining using the information of waveform the other one is the description of the sound. How well, this one now is using information from the waveform. Now the pitch, just as I said, is dependent on the frequency. So it has higher pitch because the frequency increases. Louder because amplitude increases. Higher because the pitch, the frequency increases all right so really appreciate you for watching thanks for watching 
And if you like the video, please do all to like the video, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and share with friends. We really love you and thank you for watching.